صلى وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى اله واصحابه ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين وبعد. رايت افتر ذا باتل اوف الاحزاب كين ذا باتل اوف بنو قريزه، بنو قريزه ار ذا جيوش نيبر هود ون اوف ذا ثري جيوش نيبر هودز في المدينه اند دوز ار ذا وانز هو سبورتد ذا الايز قريش اند اتس الايز ان اتاكينج ذا مدينه ذا سيتي اوف رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. So after the battle was over, you know, uh, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi was heading back to uh, Medina, and then Jibreel Alayhi Salam came to him and told him, well, do not put down your weapons yet, uh, till your army don't put your, your weapons down, because the Malaika, the angels, did not put their, their weapons down yet. There is yet another battle to go. You have to go finish the business or the matter of those Jewish people who live inside Medina, and supported the people who are attacking you because they already showed their betrayal to the Prophet ﷺ and they can do it at any moment from now on. So they broke the deal that the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ made with them once he came in Medina. So the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ headed to them and he surrounded their fort. They were fortified in the big fort that has all their gardens and all their lands and homes inside. And this is how they are a long time ago before Islam. They used to live in forts and live in uh, you know neighborhood that nobody else lives with them. Anyway, the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ surrounded them and they did not surrender, you know, to him until the siege went for so long. So they decided, well, we cannot continue our life like this because there are still some wells outside that they need to drink water from it. There are, there are land outside. They cannot live their normal life like that. So they came to a point that they started to negotiate with the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. They told him, well, we would like that somebody will judge between us and you. He said, choose someone. So they, they choose Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad, the, one of the leaders of Al-Ansar. And Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad was badly injured from the Battle of al Ahzab at that time. And uh, uh, he was being nursed at that time. So the Prophet Muhammad said, okay. They brought Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad, carrying him on, uh, on something to lift him, to bring him. And then Sa'ad ibn Mu'az spoke to them and he said, well, before I start saying any judgment. And the, the reason why they chose him, because he was one of their best allies before Islam and he was even raised among them. So he said, this is like one of us. So they thought that he will be on their own side. So Sa'ad ibn Mu'az said, before I start any judgment, will you accept my judgment? He's talking to the Jewish people there. They said, yes, definitely. And then he talked to the Muslims, will you accept my judgment? They said, yes. And he looked, uh, towards the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he doesn't want to say it to him since the Prophet is higher than him. So he said, would the people who are on this side accept my judgment? And he looked to the side of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, out of respect. So the Prophet said, yes, your judgment will go even on me. So at that, he started to, uh, to give his judgment. He said that, I judge that the men, all of them must be executed because those are the ones who carry the women against the Muslims at that time. And then the women and the, and the children will be enslaved and the money will be given to the Muslims. So uh, Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad, when, once he said what he said, the Prophet Muhammad said, حَكَمْتَ فِيهِمْ بِحُكْمِ اللَّهِ يَسَعَدْ Oh Sa'ad, you have given the judgment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that was the judgment of Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad, the one that when he died, عرش الرحمن اهتز لموته. No, the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shook upon the death of uh, Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad because he's a great man. Uh, also, at that time, uh, there happened a story that uh, one of the Sahaba, uh, that is uh, Abu Umama, I think, uh, he did something out of mistake. And I would like to quote this story because all of us are humans. We do mistakes sometimes. So when someone that you know he's a good Muslim and he's doing one big mistake in front of you and then he felt sorry for it right away and he's asking Allah to forgive him we must be forgiving you cannot keep quoting that thing and scandal him and make him ashamed of himself it's like the end of the world and then he has to die for that so this Sahabi uh, Abu Lubaba what he did is some Jewish people reached to him at that time when they were under siege and they said to him what do you think the Prophet is going to do with us since he's among the Muslims and he's seeing what's going on. So he didn't talk, but he said like this. That's like, he's gonna slaughter you. That's that what he said. Right after that, when they left, he felt sorry, for, he said, what am I doing? I'm helping them against the Muslims. I'm telling them what's going on. So he went to the masjid and he tied himself in one of the, the pillars of the masjid. 
and uh, he said nobody untie me until the prophet forgives me and untie me himself so the prophet said when the news came to him he said since he said what he said i'm not gonna untie him until the matter is over and allah forgives him if he came to me and asked for forgiveness i would have forgiven him but since he made it hard for himself i'm gonna leave him like that so he left him like that and only at the time of salah he made a deal with his wife to come and untie him just to make wudu and attend the salah right after that she ties him again to that thing he remained like that until the thing is over and then the prophet muhammad you know sent some sahaba to untie him he said no only the prophet can untie me i want to make sure that i'm forgiven for what i have done so the prophet came and he untied him and he forgave him for what he has done see because he knows that he's a true believer and this story is very similar to the story of Ka'b ibn Malik and the two other Sahaba who did not join uh, the battle with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Jaysh al-Usra and then he waited until Allah you know gave some ayat and forgave him for what he did uh, so that was uh, the matter right after that you know the surrounding tribes started to fear the Muslims however some of them will dare from time to time to fight with the Muslims. For example, uh, Banu al-Mustalaq, this is a, a, a tribe lives on the sides of Medina. They dare to come uh, collect themselves and, and they were willing to attack the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Muslims. And the news came to the Prophet. And that's a good thing that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has his own intelligence system. He has a Sahaba all around to anticipate the, the threats before they come to him. That's very important. You cannot just stay in Medina until they attack you at any moment and you know what's going you don't know what's going on so when he got the news he wants to double check when some one of the sahaba told him he sent another sahabi and that sahabi went and he said yes prophet of allah they are preparing for that so the prophet Muhammad collected the army and they went quickly to the place where they are and they took them by surprise so they were not ready yet they never thought that the prophet will come and attack them so he went over them alhamdulillah and he took a lot of prisons of war and some people ran away and when he came back to Medina, uh, one of the, the prisoner, uh, prisoners of war was uh, uh, Maymuna Juwayriya bint al Harith. Juwayriya bint al Harith, uh, this is one of the wives of the Prophet Muhammad. The, the, the Prophet married her after that. So she came in the Sahm Thabit ibn Qais, in the share of Thabit ibn Qais, that Sahabi. So that Sahabi, she asked him, Well, if I pay you money, will you free me? He said, Yes. So she, she paid money and they, he freed her and then the Prophet Muhammad married her right away, right? Mm -hmm. So that was it. So when the Prophet married her, look what the Muslims did. All the Muslims freed the, the people who are related to her from her tribe out of respect to the Prophet Muhammad So qalu ashar Rasulullah Those are related to the Prophet Muhammad How come we keep them as prisoners? So they freed them. That's why her marriage to the Prophet Muhammad was a bliss to her own people that they freed a lot of them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and out of respect to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. At that battle also another situation happened that when the Prophet was going to attack those people, a lot of munafiqeen, hypocrites joined him and those people never joined him in the previous battle of Al-Ahzab. So when they joined him, the Prophet could not tell them not to come, but he's cautious about them. And what, what he expected happened, that in the way back, those Munafiqeen started to make a fight between the Muslims. Like they found one of the, the, the people of Al-Muhajireen, one of the servants of, who served one of the people of Al-Muhajireen, fight with a servant from the people who are from Al-Ansar, the people of Medina, right? So now the people of Mecca against the people of Medina, they want to make it war. It's just a fight between two servants. It shouldn't be a big deal. But the Munafiqeen came, oh, the people who came from Mecca, now they are coming to occupy our land, to live as masters here, and they even dare to fight with us. So they started to make the, the, the people angry. So they were about to fight. So the Prophet Muhammad came, and they actually started. You know, they start throwing each other with stuff like that. Not everybody, but some of them. So the Prophet Muhammad came, and he stopped the, the fight. You know, and when they were heading to Medina, the head of al-munafiqeen, Abdullah ibn Ulay ibn Salul, said a word. said, لَإِنْ رَجَعْنَا إِلَى الْمَدِينَةِ When we get back to Medina, لَيُخْرِجَنَّ الْأَعَزُّ مِنْهَا الْأَذَلِ The most one who has dignity, like the master of Medina, will get the one who's humiliated out of it. And he means himself, like he will force the Prophet out. When he said what he said, he didn't say it in public, but he was saying to some of his little group of munafiqeen, 
But having that, one of the young Sahaba, he was a young man who was like 11, 12, was there, and he listened to what's going on. And he came, told the Prophet Muhammad about it, because he was angry. So the Prophet Muhammad believed him, and when he came to talk to them about it, he said, no, no, we never said anything like this, and they swear by Allah, and they were lying. But SubhanAllah, that young boy was very, very sad for that. But SubhanAllah, the ayat came right after that, Surah Al-Munafiqoon. And told exactly about what happened, okay? To say that this boy is saying the truth and they were lying about that. So when the ayat came, Umar ibn al-Khattab stand in front of Medina and said, Prophet of Allah, I'm not going to allow this man, this head of Munafiqeen to enter the Medina. He thinks that he's better than you. Wallahi, he's not going to enter Medina. I'm going to cut his neck right here before he enters Medina. And, uh, you know, it was really tough time. So the Prophet Muhammad told him, no, Umar. Uh, I will go inside Medina and let him go. I don't want the people to say that Muhammad is killing his own followers because he's Muslim by name. He's, he's from the hypocrites, but by name. And I don't also want to offend his son because his son was a true Muslim. Even he came to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu the son of this man, and told him, Brother of Allah, if you want to kill my father, don't let anybody kill him. Just give me the permission to kill him. Because nobody loves his father as much as, much as I love my father. So I don't like the idea that somebody else kills him from the Muslims and from the believers. And then one day I might get crazy and kill that Muslim for killing my father. I don't want this to happen. So if you decide to kill my father at any time, just let me know and I will do it. Because I, I don't accept that anybody else does this. So the Prophet Muhammad said, no, I don't want to offend you by that. We're going to leave him. May Allah guide him one day. But subhanAllah, this man died as one of hypocrites. So he lived to his life to hypocrisy and he died to hypocrisy.